Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist From Off The Cuff. Today we have a follow-up review for you. We originally actually uh, did a sneak preview of this watch and it was still in its prototype form, but I'm happy to bring to you guys a actually fully functional production model from the brand Traska. Now, um, in my original preview, you know, we actually went pretty deep into kind of uh, the Traska brand and, and um, how they were founded, and it's a very interesting story, so um, definitely check out that original one if you want to get learn a little bit more about the brand. Here we're gonna be talking more about the finished product, which is this particular watch, which is uh, their dive watch, uh, which is also known as the Free Diver. Now, um, some key common characteristics and design language when you're looking for a dive watch, what you're gonna notice, of course, is you're gonna have water resistance to some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible, um, of course, dive time bezel. Um, and then if it's on a bracelet, a diver's extension is always nice. Now, this particular watch, of course, is only rated at 100 uh, meters, which is honestly deeper than most people will dive. And a lot of the times it can be a little bit misleading because a 100 meter rated watch is normally a watch that you probably wouldn't even really wanna go swimming with. But this particular watch actually does have a screw down crown and it is meant to um, be submerged in water um, and, and be part of kind of water sports. And it's really meant to be a, a tough and durable tool watch also because it also has the uh, of the scratch resistant hard coating, which we'll even be putting to the test with a uh, scratch test later on in the review, which will be pretty exciting. Um, so definitely uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this piece in hand. Okay. So as you can see, really handsome piece. Um, and then this particular unit that we're reviewing is actually the mint dial um, with the sapphire uh, bezel with the black. Really nice contrast. Um, and then this, you know, this nice, beautiful minty color, uh, very reminiscent of the Tiffany uh, Robin's egg blue color. Really gorgeous. And then as you can see, that hardened uh, coating over the steel does give it a bit of a darker luster um, versus the the normal bright um, finish you'll see on your standard um, uncoated um, steel so uh, not to the point where I would consider it you know where it looks like titanium um, super close or anything like that but it does have a darker tint of course against uh, the background here uh, which also has a bit of a darker tint to it you probably won't notice as much um, but when we get the uh, the kind of test pieces out there, the test links to scratch and the scratch test, you'll get a better idea. But let's go over um, some of these details here. So the nice thing about the free diver is that it is quite affordable. Now with the sapphire bezel uh, here, it, it's coming in at 400 bucks. And then if you want to get the stainless steel insert, which actually is very handsome as well, um, you can save about $25 and get it for 375. And that's directly from the brand. Let's go ahead and get an idea of this bezel action. Very nice 120 click bezel. Really positive, not, not really too much back and forth play uh, to report back. So really uh, dialed in there, nothing crazy spectacular, but at the same time, of course, it definitely does get the job done. Now, as far as the specs go, this is a really nice wearing watch because it does come in at 40 millimeters. Um, and then it does only have the 12 and a half millimeter thickness there. I think the profile does make it probably appear a bit thicker than it really is. But I mean, that's part of the whole kind of tool watch design here. So I think everything kind of, uh, as far as proportions go, when you look at this, when you look at the thickness of the case versus the thickness of this beautiful clasp here, I think everything looks quite proportionate. Uh, it doesn't look like it has an overly skinny or, or thin or overly thick. On the other side, um, parts, I think everything flows really nicely, which also helps the watch wear very balanced when on wrist. Now, of course, this is underneath. It's a uh, 316L stainless steel, and then it does have that scratch resistant hard coating. Everything is brushed, and it does have these really super fine chamfers, which were quite impressive. Let's see if the camera can catch that. Uh, the studio lights there, look at that. Beautiful sharp transition off of those high polished chamfers. 
that's just one of the things that, of course, um, us watch uh, fans definitely look for when uh, you can really get an idea of the finished work and the fit and finish is if they can pull off a nice chamfer like that, chances are the rest of the watch is definitely um, also put together pretty well. And you can see even the inner lugs there do have a nice chamfer which also adds a bit of dimension and a little bit of visual play to the watch so that even as the light just kind of passes over it, um, there's just a lot of great lines. Look at that. It just kind of almost reminds me of a sports car there with that high shoulder line. Um, looks really, really nice. Now, of course, the sapphire, uh, the crystal is sapphire, and then the bezel is also sapphire. Really nicely done. So everything across the top, as far as the consistency, um, sometimes you'll see, of course, um, depending on what type of materials are used, uh, you know, it's it's not as, as smooth a flow, but because this is a sapphire, um, you know, dome crystal, and then it also is, of course, double dome, so you can see there it's domed underneath, which means distortion is really going to be down to a minimal. But the way that the light transitions, basically, you can see it right there, off of the crystal as well as the bezel is nice and uniform. Um, it's not going to be something where you're trying to match up perfectly. Um, you know, the dial, um, basically the dial textures with this bezel because um, it just nicely reflects uh, really well. Um, and then actually the printing is really done to a very high standard as well. As you can see there, if we can get a little bit closer, you can really see that this is just, uh, you know, there's not a lot that's out of place. There's no little runoffs or anything like that. Everything is nice and tight and really, really well executed. So hats off. I mean, this thing looks even better, um, definitely much better. Another level or two up from that uh, initial prototype that we had on the channel. So very, very cool from that standpoint. Uh, the movement is, of course, the Seiko Instruments NH35. A, which is hacking and hand windable. It does have that three hertz beat, which is basically six ticks a second versus the more standard eight ticks a second you'll find in, uh, you know, Swiss movements or some some uh, higher beat um, ranged uh, watches there. Of course, the price definitely does dictate, but the nice thing is you do get that hacking and hand windable um, features as well. The case back is solid and engraved. Really nicely done there as well. Um, there's even some contours to it. Let's see if I can get a closer look there. You can even get a nice idea of that the little diver there, that little spear diver, um, he's he's got some actual dimension to him. He's, he's uh, not just etched in there. There's a nice little kind of um, broken edge to it there that's a little bit softer and rounder so it's gonna really you know play well against the skin you're not gonna have some weird deep imprint or anything scratching against you and of course while we have that open you can see another nice touch that beautiful perlage here on the folding clasp everything is solid everything is milled um, definitely really great to see there and then of course you do have screw in links 20 millimeter lugs that do taper down. So really nice. And then this clasp is really exceptional. I'm really enjoying the the execution on the branding. Cause look at that, that just, that actually has changed from the, uh, from the test model that we had before. The prototype uh, definitely did not look this nice. I think everything is really well placed. As you can see, um, nice fine, uh, bevel there, not a, quite a high polish, but still catches the light really well and just adds a little bit more of dimension to there. Then you got all of these really great um, micro adjustment holes so you can really dial in the fitment, which is um, definitely another plus uh, when it comes to this particular piece. Um, everything, of course, is applied. This, this watch really just has Pretty much apart from high water resistance and um, you know and a more expensive movement, this thing really has pretty much everything you need and more. Uh, when you consider that you're getting the sapphire bezel, it's loomed. You're getting the hardened uh, material as well. So this thing is is pretty killer. So let's go ahead and see how it wears on the wrist. All right, now as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, 
Let me get a little bit more of my arm into the shot. Wears really, really well. Of course, that real classic 40 millimeter size plays really well. Up close, it's gonna look probably a little bit more oversized, but that's really just a little bit of the distortion from being so close up there. And you know, wristies always look a little bit, a little bit bigger, but as you can see, these nice lugs do actually have a, a nice slope that help them wear nicely and, and really grab the wrist there. So really beautifully done. Nice and chunky. It has a lot of presence, but it doesn't look like it's, you know, overly angular or trying to have heft. Um, it really is the genuine heft of the watch that feels very, very solid. It didn't have to do any tricks or anything to really make this thing feel solid on the wrist because it just absolutely is constructed very solidly. So really nice, as you can see, fits just super well. My hand here, love this clasp. This thing is gorgeous. Take a closer look there. And then you can see the way the light plays off of the brushing, all very uniform, extremely well done. So, and then you can see kind of the height there. Of course, this is a dive watch, so we're not expecting it necessarily to be super felt or anything like that. This still could, I'd say, fit under, you know, a couple of long sleeve cuffs, uh, maybe not a super tight dress shirt or anything like that. Um, but as far as coats go, none of them should have any problems uh, going over this. Luckily, I'm in sunny San Diego area, so I don't really have to worry about long sleeve shirts or um, coats too often. So for me, this thing could definitely be a uh, pretty nice year round wear. And I really think the color play here is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it definitely stands out, but it's not something where I'm gonna have to go out and wear a mint color to match this. I think it really just is just enough pop there to where you can wear it with a you know white t-shirt. It's it you know you don't necessarily need to match this. It's just gonna be just the right amount of kind of pop to whatever you're wearing um, and, and give you just a little bit of a nice contrast there and of course draw your eye in and then once you get in you can really see the finishing there on that dial. It kind of has this very smooth and fine silky um, finish to it almost. It's not super matted or anything like that. It's very much a satinized finish which I'm very impressed by. So. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times there's manufacturers, they have a lot of tricks, you know, they can do with different types of uh, patterns and whatnot in the dial. So when somebody just does one that's plain like this, but then has that beautiful kind of satinized glow, the way that the light plays off of it, you get a little bit of a better idea. It, it almost has a slight kind of metallic hue to it. I, I wouldn't call it metallic, you know, I don't see any flakes in it or anything, but this thing is just a, a little bit more than meets the eye. It's definitely not just a flat colored dial, but uh, let's go ahead and move into some of the loom shots. All right, let's go ahead and hit the lights. Now, as you can see, really beautiful BGW-9 loom there, and it's, you know, it's not super thickly applied. It's not trying to be some crazy loom monster, but it is a dive watch and it definitely glows the way it should. I mean, look at that, just gorgeous. The cool kind of blue tone hue there looks really great and um, definitely is nice and modern and, and really ties in to the overall uh, look of it as well when it comes to, um, you know, just the kind of general appeal of that color palette. So now what I like to do is also get a really nice um, low light transition because my Studio lights do a great job of simulating, you know, um, pure kind of outdoor unbridled direct sunlight. But when it comes to where you're actually going to spend most of your time with the watch, you're going to be coming in and out of buildings, you know, getting in and out of a vehicle. You're going to probably catch more of your watch at these kind of lighting angles. And also it gives you a chance to really see the finishing that can be washed out by the harsh studio lights. You can see there, if you take a look at the way the brushing really glints, really nicely done. Really quite beautiful. Quite impressive. So, 
really nice and then you can see looks really great with the uh, transition for that loom you know it's not see-through or anything like that so it's nothing crazy but it definitely you know holds its own which is great Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights. Now, while my camera kind of resets and goes back to its uh, normal programming here, what I'd like to do is actually move in to this scratch test. So, uh, let's go ahead and transition there to the, uh, the luckily I won't have to scratch up this watch um, the team at Trasco was was kind enough to provide some sample links that I'll be able to scratch so uh, let's go ahead and check oh, okay those out. so as you can see here really even kind of hard to tell I would say that I'm gonna assume that this one here on the left is going to be the coated one because it does have a bit of a darker tint but not as much as you would think I just have this little strap changing tool I forget even which watch that this came with or maybe it came with some straps but I was gonna use this to scratch um, we'll start here with the which I believe is the untreated so we should actually see some scratches get picked up uh, pretty easily on this side here okay so you can see there with little effort there's a good bit of a scratch there so let's go ahead and now try it on this one here. Whoa. Okay. Wow. It's pretty impressive. So what I wanted to do was go against the grain so you could really easily see the difference there. Um, I'm <laughs> so very surprised. Look at that. There's... I'm not even really, maybe if I scratch some of these upper ones where the light's a little bit different, it'll catch it a little bit better. Huh, interesting. But look at that, that was pretty easy. Oh, yeah. This bad boy's getting scratched pretty easy. You can see that on here. So this is, I mean, this is definitely gonna be harsher than what most people will end up getting a lot of their desk diving marks from on their watches. Um, you know, it's just going to be something hitting a table, a doorway, something like that. I mean, this is much harsher here with the sharpness. I'm very impressed. That doesn't even look like it's scratched. This one again, one, two, let's move up to this one and get some scratch in there. See how easily it can be done or not. Look. The, whoa, that one was... You can see it's like lifting, so the light right there. So let me go up a bit. Oh, looks like I skipped this one, sorry. Let me get you going, okay. So let me get up to here where the lighting was, and so three down, and try to scratch that one. Maybe it'll show up a little bit better. That's insane. So I mean, without me like straight trying to stab this with like a knife, that's pretty crazy. Uh, let's move them and maybe it is the lightning. Let's switch them. Nope, <laughs> that one's still trashed. And this one is amazingly in good health. Wow, that is pretty killer, I have to say. Look at that. Huh, that is jacked, absolutely. This one, maybe I'm not seeing it because I'm looking at it through a small viewfinder, but definitely let me know what you guys think. Uh, maybe also do a quick little wipe down in case there's any residue or anything like that that might be messed up now is exposed. Okay. Maybe a little wipe down, see if there's any of this buffs off. Just a quick, nope. Still pretty heinous. <laughs> so, wow, yeah, that's exciting stuff. Wow, very, very impressed. So... Really well done, uh, Traska, on, on that part. That was, I was not expecting that. Honestly, I do have watches with hardened steel cases and, and bracelets and whatnot, um, but I don't ever test them. I just 
kind of am happy that um, they generally look pretty decent. And then for me, since I have a good amount of watches that I keep in the rotation, um, it kind of keeps those wear marks to a minimum. So really excited to see this though. So if this, if you did want to, let's say maybe make this watch your one watch, um, you can see that it actually can survive. Um, that's pretty nuts. Wow. So really cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, oh, I guess I should probably do my closing thoughts. Um, you know, on the wrist, of course, really nice proportions, where it's very comfortable, great balance. The hard coating does add that kind of darker, deeper sheen to it, uh, which is really great. Uh, I think personally, um, you know, of course, now that I know that it's adding the strength, it's well worth the kind of trade off. Um, if you're somebody that just is into super bright, it's not like you're going to wear an aluminum watch. That's going to be a much brighter material. Steel is, is generally going to um, already be kind of a nice steel, you know, gray tone to it. Um, but this definitely gives it a, a hint of a little bit more of an earthy tint to it, um, which I say doesn't hurt at all, especially in this particular color combo. As far as model variants go, there are different styles. Of course, you can get the steel bezel or you can get the black sapphire loomed bezel. Um, there's also a black dial and then there's this beautiful mint dial and then, you know, different combinations between the two. Um, and I mean, really, there's some... Uh, this thing's built really well. I mean, I was... Uh, super surprised uh, as you can see you know it's not like I had to test scratch this before super surprised that uh, how well that these links stood up to everything so very very cool um, so I'm sure that would be the same case when it comes to the case uh, as well as um, you know the bracelet which is really well built supremely happy with that clasp that thing's gorgeous more micro brands should definitely take note you know, I can live without the micro adjusts or the, the quick adjust there when you're giving me something. Um, I, I shouldn't say without the micro adjust. It's great that it has the micro adjust, right? Um, versus having some crazy tinny, cheap, um, you know, kind of wannabe glide lock. I would much rather have something that performs. And then as far as needing a diver's extension for a watch that's 100 meters water resistant, that seems a bit silly. Uh, also, one of the things I really like is that this watch also has drilled lugs uh, which you noticed when i was kind of flipping the watch around which makes it really a strap beast especially with that uh, 20 millimeter uh, lug width so really great all around um i'm probably even more impressed and delighted with this thing um especially in this color combo and now with that i, I guess uh you know a the the lack of anxiety i'd say over scratching up uh the watch is definitely gone which is really cool so it's something that you can really um take with you and um it, it just completes kind of that mission statement of a tool watch that uh that the trasca brand and uh you know the founder uh john when he really set out to make this you know this type of watch that could just go with you for any activity that really tied back to the tool watch nature of these divers. You know, there's a lot of divers, even desk divers out there that they just, um, they just miss the mark. You know, it's all about specs and, you know, capabilities that you would never use in a real time situation. And then the watch gets, you know, from a day to day basis as like just a, a tool watch to wear, the watch can just be beat to hell. You know, and yeah, sure, it can survive 600 meters worth of pressure, but that doesn't help you when you drop it, you know, from a couple of feet and it's, you know, doesn't have enough shock resistance or you get it scraped and it doesn't have any type of protective coating or anything like that. So I don't know. I, I think that's a really cool approach that they took and um, just super impressed. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Thank you